All right, welcome to the Liverpool Connection podcast. Julian here with Chris, and it's just been announced that Ryan Gravenberch has signed for Liverpool. Immediate thoughts, Chris. Yeah, look at uh you gotta be excited. Look, we got we 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 got we got the big fella in, big Dutch guy, uh come through the ranks at Ajax. Um obviously Bayern thought, you know, they were buying a, a real good player when 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 they bought him a couple of seasons ago. So uh yeah, I'm excited. Look, uh, look, yeah, it's good to get 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 someone in. I think, um, at least, well, at least I don't mean that that way. It, it's good to to get some bodies in there. Um, you know, real, real good. Looks like there's real good competition in there for for some of those spots in in, in midfield. We're a little bit light in in other parts of, in other parts of the field, and maybe maybe at the DM position. We might be a little mm-hmm. bit light, but as far as kind of on the attacking sense and the, on the offensive side of things, I think now we've we've got we've got some good solid options with lads that look like uh stay fit, touch wood, and we'll we'll you know we'll we'll get we'll we'll get to see we'll get to see what he brings to the team. Stats stats from Ajax look you know really good. He's a real big imposing ball carrier. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing him now. I have to be honest with which I I think it's uh I think it. I'm hope I'm hopeful it'll be a real good a real good sign. He's uh, yeah, he is. Uh, he's a couple of years ago before he joined Bayern. I mean, he was the wonder kid, the midfielder that your Real Madrid's us back then, Manchester United, Bars. Everyone was looking at him, and he was being spoken of. Okay, hey, this this guy is probably going to be potentially one of the best midfielders in the world. And then, of course, he went to Bayern, and then for whatever reason, that was it. You know, just didn't work out for him. Whether that was the formation that Bayern played, um, he obviously played under a couple of different managers, didn't work out under both. Um, but he's 21 years old. Um, he seems to be someone that can fit into a variety of positions in midfield. I.e., it looks like it's someone that can be developed and under Klopp, he's really the perfect manager to do that. And while he's he's definitely not a dedicated number six, for example, right now. And I wouldn't expect that, you know, this season and maybe next season. It might be something he is able to become. But he certainly, from everything I've seen, he's a progressive, extremely talented on the ball. He can carry the ball forward. He's got a good range of passing on him. He's got a good shot on him. Um, he's really good in tight spaces as well. Very Ginny Wijnaldum as well. So whether he, he he's, he's an option, right? You look at our midfield options now and it's... The majority, it's young, it's exciting, it's looking towards the future. There's a lot of talent in there. Whether Gravenberg is someone that comes and and is someone that makes the first eleven at the moment, that's probably up for debate. Um, he's probably more going to be, I would guess, a backup for either McAllister or Soberslai, and they can rotate. Um, I don't see him as a number six, which still presents to us the issue that we have where we have uh endo budgetic that's really it there's still there's still a bit of a gap there but um who knows Klopp might be looking at trying something here where he is able to fit Graven Birch into the same side what do you think about that yeah I'm wondering I'm wondering is it, are we moving now away from that tried and tested uh from that tried and tested 4-3-3 three, three that Klopp had so much success with and we're kind of moving I think we're going to move some fellas or a couple of fellas around here and I'm wondering I'm wondering are they since he's so mobile since he's so good on the ball and he can get from box to box I'm wondering is the thinking maybe of sticking him in there alongside Endo and playing a two but that behind the tree uh, and then sticking Nunes up front and Salah back out in the wing. Well, that's the uh, next evolution, isn't it? I mean, that's what yeah. you look at the signings that we've made and within the past year, almost two years, and they are they're aiming towards a, a different setup, right? Yeah, we've seen, of course, the trend, the hybrid thing that doesn't look like it's going away. Nunes, we paid a lot of money for. Right, and he's someone that works as he's best at the top number nine by himself. And to do that with the attacking midfielders we have, it feels like all these signings in midfield are leaning towards that double pivot idea. So you could see that you could see the the Endo and the Gravenberch in that position. 
That's certainly yeah, something I think, that I think so. I think so. And I think, to me, when I look at it, that's the only way I can make sense of it. To 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 be to be to be to be really honest with you. And I think as far as the Trent thing goes, then I think then that can be put to bed. You can leave Trent back out at right back. I, I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know if that's yeah, going to happen. We'll guy, see. It's I, I maybe. I think this guy but... has enough in his locker. I think this guy has enough in his locker and that range of passing, as you spoke about, to be able to do what, what Trent does as effectively. He may not be, you know, I, I think he, he can be as effective as Trent in there and I think it's going to give Endo a lot more, a good bit of protection to have a big, big guy like that beside him. And then I just think it takes that, takes that risk of bringing, bring, because we didn't sign a yeah. right back. You know, we didn't sign any kind of cover to move around as, as three cent plates with three center halves. You know, we, I, I think then it just, it, that kind of opens up the field so much more for us now where we can go back to the more traditional uh, having Robbo bomb up the left wing having Trent bombing mm-hmm. up the right wing and then having, a, a, having you know, a, a guy like Endo that's just going to sit there and kind of protect protect your two center halves and then let, let, let Gravin Birch now go up and down, up and down that field and really show off that fluidity and the mobility that he has. And so I think to me that that's the only kind of setup I, I see here. And I think also coincidentally, or maybe not coincidentally, with 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 Nunes kind of showing the bit of form that he showed in preseason and and and, and, and in new against Newcastle, then I think then that system allows for to get the best out of him also. It does. So I think then he of can course. be up there as a nine. He can put Salah. Well, who knows with Salah now? You know. Well, we'll we'll, we'll uh, for now we'll yeah. we'll avoid all Salah chat. Yeah, because <laughs> well, we've know, had enough of that what... this morning and this afternoon. Yeah. Like yeah, you we'll, know what I mean. We'll like leave that for another could, day. But yeah, you could you could put him out there then as well, and then you can you can you can have you know McAllister kind of more central in that ten, and then Sabaslight on the wing, or you can have even McAllister on the wing, and then you can have Gapo as the as the number ten. So there's, I think that opens up a, this signing opens up a lot of possibilities. It's a different uh, for that it's, type of formation. It, it is the next evolution, right? It's the Klopp. Uh, team mark to with a little hint or maybe a massive hint of Pep Linder's involvement in this because you've gone away from you know the Wijnaldum the Henderson the Fabinho that they, they weren't there to score goals they were there to win the ball back and then pass the ball out to Trent or to get it to Robbo or to get it to Firmino you know they were the hustlers this yeah. is different this is very these are very very technical players really good on the ball there's a lot of goals from midfield now and you remember back to when we won the league in the champions league our midfielders didn't barely got above five goals right each player it was all about the it was all about the front three now you're gonna see um and we see we saw it towards the end of last season we saw it this season we're gonna score a lot of goals right with this setup with the players that we have we're probably gonna concede a lot as well Based on, you know, on yeah, the evidence I, of what we've seen I as well, know. but it's I, I good. Think... I mean, this this guy, I mean, this could prove to be a massive, massive bargain if if he he becomes the player that everyone thought he was going to be when he was at Ajax. I mean, there is a yep. a top quality player in there, and he's at the right club under the right manager to get that out of him. Yeah, the only so just not to. You know, I'm obviously very. I, I'm positive on this fella. I, I think yeah. it, it, it's a good. I think it's a good sign. And, and as I say, I think when you kind of look at it and kind of analyze it a little bit more and kind of see, you can kind of see a little bit now what probably we didn't, we couldn't see a little bit earlier. That we, yeah, it looks like we're going away from the 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 four three three. The only the only couple of things that would make you would make me a little bit worried is. A, you know, Bayern don't let too many fellas go that are top notch. Um, I can't think of any, to be honest with you. Uh, that's one thing. Yeah. And the other thing too is, you know, it seemed like he didn't quite get along with Tuchel. They didn't kind of see eye to eye. Tuchel strikes me as this very intense. Not a lot character. of people. Not a lot of people do. Maybe that's a good sign. Yeah, like I, well, Klopp, I don't know. Klopp but, wants him, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I don't know because Klopp is intense as well. You know, like these guys are like 
very, they seem to be, you know, very micromanagey, like intense, like fucking in your face, do what I'm fucking telling you to do it and do it. Don't question, just do it. And I'm, you kind of wonder, okay, well, was that, was that a bit of a problem at Bayern? And is that why he didn't get as much playing time as he had? I don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. But it's I, a I'm good. Hoping, I'm hoping it's not the case. If you're talking about like a, you know, 110 million player like Casado or even a 65 with Romeo Le- Levea, and then you look at um, Gravenberch and they haven't, they haven't announced what the fee is, but the thought prof, thoughts were is around the 35, 40 million. I mean, that's a good, in this day and age, that's so. a pretty good gamble, right? I think that's a, that's pretty a good gamble lose, really. you can make, right? So, um, but it looks like, yeah, on the website, he signed, um, the, it says waiting for a work permit. Hopefully he gets that. Well, that would be a disaster. And let's see. He has a little bit of an interview on here. And he says, I'm very, very happy that the deal is done and I'm finally here. Uh, if you see it from the outside, it's one of the biggest clubs in the world. Also, the fans, a stadium. I think everything from the outside is top. So that's why it was the right club. And that's what he has to say so far. Uh, well, and then no. he says, oh, he says one more thing. He says, I'm really looking forward to being at Anfield and I can't wait to hear you'll never walk alone. The Reds new number 38 added. 38. Jeez. 38. So I believe he wore that at Ajax. So it's obviously oh, really? a number that is personal to him. But yeah, I'm excited by it. I, I don't think it necessarily solves the issues that we have, but it certainly gives us more quality options in midfield and there's no doubt we might not win the league this season but it's going to be bloody exciting our games are not going to well, be it's not going to be many nil nils i would expect with so, us so i'll, I'll so, kind of say this i don't know whether i'm just after having my happy pills today or it's friday <laughs> it's I friday it before is. a long weekend here but uh, I, I i think i think this sign and does sort of help with some of the issues, uh, as I say, I I don't see anything else but a a four two three one sort of setup with this guy in the team. I don't think we've you know we've put out forty million quid to have him sit on the sideline. I don't think he's come to sit on the sideline because that was one of his big grievances at Bayern. So I I I, I now I, I in saying that I do think it's going to help with some of the issues, not all of them. Obviously, right. I still think well. I, and we may talk about this uh, at a different time. You know, I think I, I I still think we're we're probably short. We we could have signed another center back, and we could have signed a little bit of help for Trent as well in this window. Well, we're recording so, this, and we have what? There's an hour left. Yeah, that's. Uh, it doesn't look happen. like it. It doesn't yeah, look like nice. there's um much more happening. But yeah, I mean, we we're gonna need to get lucky over the next few months. Uh, we lack a little bit of depth for right back, center back. Uh, it's the injuries, isn't it? Unfortunately, you would think yeah, we have it. Yeah, you would think we have it. Yeah, you would think we have it all at the one time. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, Matip's going to be broken. Canate is broken at the moment. Yeah. Gomez is currently fit. Yeah, unfortunately, he's probably going to get broken. Virgil course yeah. is suspended uh, for the next two games, so it is. A, it's a massive risk. Um, but will be exciting you know it's gonna be interesting but yeah i'm excited by graven birch i think there is a lot of quality there and why it didn't work out for Bayern, he's certainly he's gonna get more opportunities with us um yeah. and he's obviously been promised that as he wouldn't have come so it just adds more quality to already a pretty decent midfielder you look and we have Sobersly and we have uh mcallister in there you know we have harvey elliott we have jones Tiago. Birch. Tiago's broken again. He just yeah, got back into idiot. training, unfortunately. But um, there's a lot of goals, a lot of talent in them midfield. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's a good, this is a good signing. I feel pretty good about this one. And... Yeah, I do. I, I, I do as well. I can, I, in saying that now, I can see why, you know, there, there might be a couple of, couple of eyebrows raised and, you know, the, the, there's obviously, the, the last, there'll be a few fellas and I was kind of a little bit like that myself when this first started coming out kind of going well is he really what we need it's not we don't really you know we need something else you know we need a more defensive fella uh, or a defensively minded fella 
um, more. But I just then, when I started sitting down and started really kind of looking, okay, well, what does this guy do? What can he do on the ball? What 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 sort of you know what sort of football does he play? I think you can stick him in. You can stick him inside the like of Endo. Uh, and he should be able to give his mate a good dig out there, and I think he can play the two of them and have a fairly solid base there for, for, well, the, I, for the life I, moving forward. If you ask me at the beginning of the season, you know, would I rather Casado or would I would rather Sobersly, McAllister, <laughs> and um, Graven Birch? Then I know I'm taking all day those three because the cost wise, if you look at it, it's not much of a difference between the one player and the three players. The three players we've signed, maybe none of them are the ideal for that one position. We need help, but um, I would have taken that all day long still. Yeah, the, the Casado thing. I don't know if we'll ever, if the lever, we probably will never know what. Fa- fa- but that was I just this so weird. Just get drunk. This so just get drunk <laughs> and just send off, send off a random fax or something, or I don't know. Or got yeah, mixed up. like some intern oh, I have my, I'm a whiskey. Yeah, the fans are fans are really pissed off. Let's just let's just throw. He's not going to join us, but let's just throw a bit out there just to you yeah, know keep but, the the fans happy and. You know, I think it was know, it right? Stephen Warnock said that, didn't he? Stephen Warnock said that it was uh, he didn't think the deal was serious and it was more like a PR stunt. You know, the ex Liverpool yeah, player, I, he works for. Uh, I mean, he could Liverpool. be, he could be, he, he could longer. be right because it absolutely makes no sense whatsoever with the players that we signed. Yeah, <laughs> and the players that we, you know, and just, just yeah, and the money that we spent, right? Because we basically spent no money. And when it and then it goes back and it came out today that uh, Romeo Lavea, um or Lavia, I don't know how you pronounce the name, doesn't really matter, doesn't play for us anymore. But he was all set to join us, and then we pulled out of it essentially because we wanted to go for Casado. And then when we went back for Lavea, you know, he was then going to go to Chelsea, and I think the agent said or it came out and said that he wanted to join us, like he wanted to join us, but the agent pushed him to Chelsea because they were offering more money. In yeah, the yeah. end, but we could have got that one over the line. I mean, that could have happened, but um, who knows? But anyway, I'm excited. Thirty-four point two million. I'm just looking at it. it's on the te- it's on the telly here. Thirty-four point two million. That's, a, that's potentially a massive bargain. I mean, you look at those deals. You look right? at the fee we pay for you know Sobers line. You look at McAllister. Yeah, and, and this and yes, Endo to a lesser extent, but that I mean that's four. You know, extremely good deals and could all all present massive value for money. Not that it's our money, but it's <laughs> we're working on a different budget yeah. to the to the Man Cities and the Chelsea's. But those four players, I think we might get yeah. an influx of cash here. I'm soon. happy. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. Did something just pop up on Sky? <laughs> no, no, no. I it just it, it's just it. it, it uh... It just feels it, it. It feels like we're we're going to get some money here shortly. <laughs> well, well, yeah, we'll we'll yeah, we'll, we'll keep the Salah stuff. We won't talk about it. We'll leave yeah. that for another time. Anyway, all right, cool. Cheers, yeah. Chris. No worries. Uh, God bless, and, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. We will. All right. See you later. Bye. Make sure you like. Make sure you subscribe, and speak to you later. Bye.